Hello and welcome. Oh wow, what was that? Welcome again to the Hobo and Girlfriend, or Hobo and something. Let me get back a little bit more. There we go. Reverb. Where was my speaker? Oh, that's why. Duh. There we go. That's a lot better. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and my name is the one, the only. Hobo Tom. Strike the pose. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, including the 31 people that, no, 32 people that watched me last night. I was depending when this goes up on Sunday night. For a mania, which was actually a really fun mania. And with the help of Dr. Tom, Obviously knows something about pro wrestling more than I know. Normally I'm a 50-50 booker. But Dr. Tom was in Stephanie McMahon's head. Knew exactly what she wanted to, to accomplish. So with that being said, I still have a little bit little case of the snuffles. It is that time here in Daytona Beach, so I do apologize in case I wipe my nose a lot. It is that time of year where for about two or three weeks, I guess in the 30s, I still have to go collect some aluminum too. But if I don't get it, some other bum will. They're not posing themselves on my territory. Uh -uh. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. This was actually a really... Fun Raw after the Royal Rumble, <clears throat> mainly because they showed highlights that mattered. It wasn't a highlight reel show, which is kind of like the worst show to have. Because you know what? You can always go to YouTube and watch it. So it felt good. Again, I kind of go via third party. No one heard of that because I said it too quick. But the Royal Rumble was actually pretty fun. Uh, I've, I've heard some other reviews on it. I agree with some things. I disagree with others. Hey, we're wrestling fans. It's not life-altering decisions. What you like or not. So this Raw starts off with Seth Rollins giving a promo. Again, basking in his glory of, of winning the Men's Royal Rumble. Then Triple H comes out. Last time we saw Triple H and Seth Rollins in a ring, Triple H kind of called him out. Seth said he would burn Triple H's family down too. And before that, Triple H hit the pedigree on him and gave Kevin Owens the Universal Championship. I think that's a lot. I think those were the last few times they saw, they saw each other. So then Dean Ambrose shows up. He called Triple H a suck up. And just began to insult him a little bit. I said, but do you need permission from your father-in-law to make a match? So the first match of the evening we have was Seth, Roll Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. I'll tell you what. This was a much better match than their pay-per-view pay match. It was tables, ladders, and chairs. I think. Whatever their last pay-per-view match was, it was, it was horrible. It kind of got booed out of the building. It was long, boring. Rest hold after rest hold, and, and hey, let me put you in another rest hold. So this was a lot better, though. Um, again, they start off a good back and forth. They start trading chops on the outside. My one qualm, only well, because I bought the book, the official WWE Book of Rules, from my nephew. I'm reading it, too. I mean, the referee has to do a better job with that 10 count, because there was a lot of outside stuff. This whole card was weird like that. They trade chops. Dean Ambrose is definitely getting more aggressive. He's becoming a little bit more in the hinge, which would be good and, and would fit, of course, the lunatic fringe character. Seth, he didn't do the headbutt. He's, he's learned from Samson on how to do the headbutt, and then he did a splash. 
Flying Seth is fun, Seth. Except for he can't go to the well too often because he didn't miss on a frog splash. Almost lost it. Um, Dean eventually did succumb to the burn it down stomp or whatever, stomp it out, whatever it's called. Oh, that's disgusting. I'm sorry you folks had to listen to that. I think because of the meat food I just had, that doesn't help my cause any. Um, so Dean starts to cut a promo. Nia Jax shows up. They're beginning... Nia, well, Nia Jax and Tamina show up because they have the next match. This is teasing, though, true intergender wrestling. And really, based on the size of Nia Jax, Nia Jax is probably roughly the same size of a Dean Ambrose. Well, Dean Ambrose is not the person... Again, the titty master. It's not really the person who should face Nia Jax, per se. But Nia Jax is that one woman that would be believable if she went against a man. Probably her, Tamina, Ronda Rousey. Um, Selena Vega is way too short. Who else? Bailey's just tall and lanky. Charlotte, maybe Becky, the way they're pushing Becky. Again, long story short, there's a short list. So this led to the first Elimination Chamber match. Or, I'm sorry, Elimination Chamber. Oh, I'm sorry. What was I thinking? Seth and Dean Ambrose. That was a good, fun match. Much better than our first one. This was a surf and turf match. Again, for this is the Elimination Chamber qualifying match. <clears throat> three teams from Raw. You already know who they are. And three teams from SmackDown. One team, you already know who they are. And they face off in the Elimination Chamber, and I'll get into that. A little bit later, but it's Alexa Bliss versus Mickey James, and this was the one where you're not too sure about. Alexa Bliss, for the most part, takes the brunt of it for some reason, and that's Samoan headbutt. That just looks violent. From that neck breaker Mickey James did. Listen, Mickey James, you need a better bottoms to do that. We saw a lot of Mickey James. But it was good, though. Um, uh, Tamina was kind of doing what Tamina should do, kind of being the supporting character <clears throat> to Nia Jax. The tag team action was pretty good. Um, there was the one spot Nia Jax had both Alexa Bliss and Mickey James on her shoulders for the, for the double Samoan drop. That's how she won the match. And Tamina and Nia... And, ooh, surprise. Mina and Nia Jax are advancing to the Elimination Chamber match. Good for them. And this was the one where you're like, yeah. Alexa Bliss and Mickey James have teamed up before. They're a little bit more believable. Again, this was a fun match. That was a good cheeseburger match. Next, we kind of Rehash an old feud. And yeah, this time I'm going to take my mic off. I don't have to hear anything. But... Wow, that still picks it up. I do apologize about that, folks. Again, trying to get the sniffles out of my system. Before I go hoboing. Because I am Hobo Tom. But let's talk about two people who are not hobos. A one person who's an Olympic champion. And that Kurt Angle took on Baron Corbett again. Um, can't I'll, I'll give him this much. Kurt Angle can still wrestle and can still put on a really fun match. My only thing, <sighs> Corbin has the same move set. I think since his very first day in WWE, he really hasn't grown as a wrestler. 
as a performer, he's getting much better, much more comfortable on the mic. <laughs> hey, you're not me. But again, his wrestling's kind of really stagnated. Uh, minus the time he put Angle in the ankle lock, he hasn't really done anything different. Um, although with this, Corbin did kick out of the angle slam. Pretty good. He made it to the ropes when he was in the ankle lock. And he used the deep six as a finisher? Huh? When did that finish anyone who is not Jobber McJobbers? Again, so he picked up the pin with the deep six, punctuated it with an end of days. And I'm feeling generous because the Royal Rumble was that fun. This was a good cheeseburger mash. I mean, there's nothing overly wrong with it. It was fun. It was enjoyable. Kurt Angle got a spot. And uh, Kurt Angle's again giving the rub to Corbin. And hey, that's good. Next, Finn Balor comes out and just starts kind of highlight program from him at the Royal Rumble. And he's confronted by Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush. Leo Rush is probably closer to his weight than Finn is to Bobby Lashley. But again, this will probably put Finn in a program for the IC belt versus Bobby Lashley. And if they continue this and do the right things, this could <clears throat> lead on to media, and it would be good for both both wrestlers. And depending how things go, maybe Lashley could go after Brock's Universal Championship at some time, unless Seth wins it. But I made some wild predictions about Kenny Omega and showing up as a surprise entrant, beating Brock Lesnar, and then for Survivor Series, Kenny Omega versus AJ Styles. That's the fanboy of this guy. That, that, that would. And then we have a tag team match, Zack Ryder and, and Curtis Hawkins. Or, or, yeah, yeah, Curtis Hawkins. Which is a revival. And this actually went back to being a very classic tag team match. I mean, Zack Ryder was always a very good technical, a very good technical wrestler. He definitely deserved having the icy belt. He probably should have had it longer than he did. He had it, I think, for one day. He lost it. He won it Sunday, lost it Monday. Gave him his, his highlight, I guess. Um, Kurt Hawkins, they're going to tease him winning. And eventually it's going to probably be in a tag team with Zack Ryder. Or he'll, he's going to go over someone else. I'll tease that. That's a tease for later. Again, with, against the Revival. Again, the Revival is a classic hard-hitting tag team. A very map-based, very good technical match. Um, rough uh, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins. Kurt. Well, again, Kurt Hawkins, they have to gel a little bit more as a tag team. The Revival is much smoother. And this time they actually hit the Shatter Machine. And they didn't have to cheat to win. So maybe someone in management did listen to the revival and say, hey, we'll, we'll book you stronger. So again, that was uh, that was a fun match. And because they were going to tease Kurt Hawkins getting his first win, that's going to be a cheeseburger moment. Then we have Daniel Bryan and Luke Rowan come in, and he's still the bush hippie, and Luke Rowan's gone bush hippie too because he's wearing a flannel. Again, on SmackDown, I want to see Bray Wyatt show up and maybe have Daniel Bryan fight Bray Wyatt for control of the Wyatt family. Kind of what... <coughs> They should have done a long time ago, I think. And they should probably go in a different direction than what they did with Randy Orton. So again, again, that could be good. Then we have an Elias segment. With that, he's interrupted by 
J E double F J A double R E double T Jeff Jarrett. And he came out and he said, Why'd you beat me up? I just want to have a duet with you. Elias says, like, nope. No one deserves a duet with me. Elias is turning a heel again, which is probably good. He had a good face run. Again, he's good. <laughs> he's he's good on the guitar. I can never bust out a riff like he can. And of course, the crowd was going bonkers. And they did the Seven Nation. Oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. So again, that was really fun. And they were doing some other chant, which was pretty cool too. Oh, they were chanting, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. To Elias. And then the road dog, Jesse James, come out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, chill of all ages. The WWE proudly presents one half of D-Generation X. The road dog, Jesse James. I got two words for you. And the whole crowd goes, suck it. And I'm like, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa we got to keep this PG. Because I think other people were going like absolutely bonkers with crush chops. And it was just fun. I wonder if this will work better. I'm going to do I apologize, folks. This time of year, I'm going to the sniffles. Oh, that's much better. Very good. That stuff out of your system while it's sitting, then you swallow it and say, Ugh. So Again, this was an Elias heel term. Jeff Jarrett again is just there to give the rub off. He's a guitar shot again. All, all of a sudden. Dana Brooke. There's a little segment between Dana Brooke and Natalia. They're tag team partners. They're not winning. Oh, Dana Brooke is dressed in the purple and black, or pink and black, just like Natalia. Um, she's saying, oh, you're not even in my league. Listen, Dana. That's right, because Natalia's out of your league. Then there was a weird segment with Mojo Rally, where he's talking to the mirror. And if they were going to do this right, and I've heard this, so I'll take this idea from Steven Larson, where Mojo Rally is actually Zack Ryder's alter ego. I forget how that works. But you have Mojo Rally talking to a mirror, and the reflection in the mirror should have been Zack Ryder. That would have been interesting. But he just looks like a psycho. And the way he talks, oh, it's okay. Not bad. Oh, I forget if I mentioned it, but, but the Revival, Ryder, Kurt Hawkins match, that was a cheeseburger match. I'm trying, I'll, I'll fit that in there when I do my editing. So Natalia and Dana Brooke come out, and then, of course, the Riot Squad shows up. I know who's winning. It was pretty good. Um, the top, uh, they're actually really pushing Dana Brooke a lot. Um, it was this time it was Logan and Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan. They could free bird the woman's title. That would be pretty neat. They could be semi the anti free bird free birds, which would be interesting. The free birds were fairly chaotic, but they still like to have a good time. They just would beat up people. Dear. They're just there to, to cause chaos and, and beat up people. So I guess it would be not the hero, but I guess like the anti-hero or the anti-freebird. This um, it was a good it was a good enough match. Once you know who they were facing, it's like kind of predictable. I mean, it was fun. I mean, Liv can take a bump as long as she's not getting kicked in the head. Um, Natalia's a pro's pro. I think Natalia's been trying to get some time off because she's been pretty busy. And Dana Brooke, they can push her. Substitute her for Natalia anytime. 
Uh, Natalia did wind up eating the pen. A ham sandwich. That's only because it was very predictable. So next week on Raw, we're having Sasha Banks and Bailey versus another tag team. I don't even care who was. That's, oh, God. I know they announced it on TV. I hope they don't to the Bella Twins. I just thought of that. That sounds absolutely god-awful. But hopefully that doesn't come to fruition. Um, next we have uh, Ronda Rousey gives a promo. They start to chant for Becky, and this is where Ronda Rousey has has made advances, leaps and bounds in her wrestling. She's not that good on a promo when she, the crowd doesn't react the way she expects to. So that's kind of tough. Um. Gives an open prom, gives an open challenge. Again, they start chanting for Becky, 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 and then Bailey comes out. Um, Ronda Rousey gets an early advantage with all her MMA skills. Um, Bailey then goes at, uh, goes after the knees, and the crowd starts singing the Bailey song. And Ronda Rousey almost looked confused because they were not cheering for Ronda Rousey. She's the face champion. She was not getting cheered. They're saying, hey, baby. Ooh. I want to know, will you be my girl? Hey, baby. Ooh. Ah. I want to know, will you be my girl? So they were doing that, and, and Ronda seemed a little off. Um, there was one time Bailey literally told her what to do next. Because you could tell they went for a collar and elbow type, and you said, yeah. I mean, you could, if you were in those first 20 rows, you probably could have heard the spot. Try not to make it as obvious as that. Because then it's like, oh, she's telling her the spot. And I know one day on Twisted Pixies channel, I'm going to explain all my wrestling jargon, spots, works, jobbers. Shoot. It's kind of secret wrestling things. It's not a secret anymore. Um, Bailey, uh, Ronda Rousey did hit that hanging arm bar, which was pretty cool. And when did Bailey learn to do submission? Because she was going for, I don't think it was a knee bar. It was almost a heel hook. They called it a knee bar. She really kind of fumbled with it a lot, though. Again, not something that she's been practicing. Um, they said they were going for the state bank statement. Obviously, she hasn't mastered the bank statement. That's Sasha Banks' move. So, of course, Ronda Rousey's going to win when she put her in the arm bar. She tapped out. Crazy shake Bailey's hand. Eh, Bailey wasn't having any of it. And then Becky Lynch showed up. And the place went bonkers because we know for WrestleMania, it's going to be Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey. And evil Becky is still amazing. Um, then the next match... And that was actually a really, actually, it was a really fun match. It, it was, it was a good, it was a good cheeseburger match. A lot of things kept it from being that kind of surf and turf match. Hello and welcome. So I'm not going to harp on it too much. But again, a good solid cheeseburger match. Then the next match was Drew McIntyre versus Braun Strowman. There's a lot of beef in that ring, folks. Um, bra both of these, again, doing power moves. A lot of brawling. Again, what you expect from two really big, beefy guys. I mean, Drew McIntyre is just drips manliness. Braun Strowman's just a monster among men. We'll see you have to say it. Braun does have to realize, though, that people have seen him now and they have scouted his moves because, again, he did the kind of run around the ring thing to short, short tackle. Drew just olayed him right into the barricade, went right through that barricade. 
I got a heavy fist. This is that one match, and that's why I'm going to give it what it did, where they were on the outside a lot, and Baron Corbin got involved. And for a while, Baron Corbin didn't make a difference because he was just getting beat up by Braun. Yeah, um, he went, Baron Corbin went to go pick up the stairs. Probably I think just like kicked him, got the stairs, started to beat Baron with the stairs. And again, as long as you're not the one doing the thing to said person, there won't be a DQ. It only gets DQs when that Baron actually puts his hands on him. I don't know. But they were outside a lot. I was shocked that the, that the referee allowed it because they had to be outside for a good 10 minutes, much less a 10 second count. Again, he he did hit he did hit out uh, he did hit the running thing to both Drew and Baron the second time. Then count out, but then of course Baron Corbin eventually got his hands on Braun Strowman, and you know what that means, folks? We got ourselves a death to finish, baby. But in WWE, a death to finish means Braun Strowman wins. And it was a dusty old ham sandwich, folks. And then to close the show is a Brock Lesnar promo. Paul Heyman, my name is Paul Heyman, and I'm the advocate for him. Um, you, can, you guys know in the rest of the memorized lines, word by word. Um, tell us how to make a decision. If, Death, if Seth was smart, he would choose Daniel Bryan in the WWE title. Of course, that's going to bring Seth, Seth Rollins out to the ring. Gets an early edge by kicking Braun in the gut where Braun was injured during his match with Finn Balor the previous night. Then he just started to get a lot of F5s. He went from a curb stomp. Brock Lesnar caught him doing the curb stomp into an F5. Like, when he was in the air, he literally caught him, F5'd him once. Looked really upset, <clears throat> F5'd him again. Looked at his Universal Championship, F5'd him again. <clears throat> the referees got involved. He said, just for the, your involvement, refs, I'm going to F5 him again. And because he wants my title, I'm going to F5 him on the title. And I think that last time... He hit it one more time because I think someone said, hey, there's still a couple seconds left. Do it again. And the crowd is chanting one more time. So, again, it was, a, it was a fun show. It was a good – again, the big thing about this show is that it wasn't just a highlight reel from the previous night. It had, had poignant highlights that made sense for the story beats. And it was fun. I mean, I think there was only the, the two ham sandwich matches. Again, if you're going to be predictable, WWE, you're going to get knocked down a peg. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also comment on some of the production value I've been putting into this video. And I shall see everyone Tuesday night. Have a good night, folks. It's time for me to go back to work. Bye.